What's up guys, welcome to Q&A Mondays. I'm Thad Barnett and we're back with another episode and we're gonna talk about weather tight warranties and how to choose the right accessories for your weather tight warranty project. I've got Jeff Hawk from the Sheffield Metals Technical Department with me. Thanks for being here, Jeff. Absolutely, happy to be here. So Sheffield Metals offers weather tight warranties for several of their panel profiles and there is a process that uh, contractors are required to follow in order to install that system correctly, and that includes having the proper assembly. So let's start there with you know what having a proper assembly means for their weather tight warranty. Okay, well I mean per Sheffield's weather tight warranty requirements, you know we require engineering to be on every type of weather tight warranty we do, whether it is required or not. You know in the specification. We only do weather type warranties on commercial projects, so there's usually always a spec. Not all specs are created equal. You know, some might just list a panel profile and, uh, and a color. We try to do everything we can to promote long-term metal roofing and best practices. So uh, we have a minimum UL90 requirement no matter what when it comes to us providing weather type warranties. So with that being said, you know, the assembly is going to be, you know, dictated a lot by what the engineering is calling out for, right? You know, the proper clip the proper fastener, things like that. All in all, when doing warranties with Sheffield is is pretty easy because most all the products that we supply are going to be approved for use in our weather type warranties, right? You're going to get that information from the technical department and the person you're dealing with on the warranty project, and they're going to let you know, this is the sealant we need you to use. This is the underlayment we want you to use. Here's the type of pop rivets, things like that. So a lot of the guesswork is going to be taken out of it for you in most situations where everything you know, can be used in standard stuff. So when you actually go to uh, put in your weather tight warranty application, or let's say that you just got awarded a job, you don't want to go and just purchase all the stuff that you need, all the material, all the accessories without going through the proper channels first. No doubt. Num I mean, number one, you know, Sheffield, you know, all the accessories should be purchased through Sheffield if it's something that we provide. And that's and that's pretty much most manufacturers. They want you buying their stuff because, you know, let's face it, you know, you, you tell a contractor, hey, you know, these are the fasteners we need. They go out, they think they get the fasteners that are right. You get on the job site, they aren't right. They got 20 squares installed. Well, those screws don't match the engineering. Now we have 20 squares of problems, right? You know, all the accessories that can be provided from Sheffield should be provided from Sheffield or any manufacturer that you're dealing with usually. If nothing else, I mean, it kind of safeguards you. If there's a mistake, it's not on the contractor, it's on the supplier at that point, right? You know, the, the real question gets into play is products that aren't supplied by Sheffield or if you need something substituted because of uh, a requirement in the spec. Usually the stuff that, you know, you have to start looking at in those types of situations are underlayments because they might have specific requirements they want for underlayments and rooftop curbs. Those are going to be usually the two big ones that you have to look at um, that aren't going to be provided by Sheffield or, or couldn't be provided by Sheffield based on what the spec says that, uh, you know, might come up. Or quite honestly, a contractor might have something that they really like using and that they're comfortable with, you know, that's usually sealants. You know, contractors are pretty dedicated to a certain type of sealant, it seems. And, you know, they might want to get that approved through uh, Sheffield. Yeah, I would like to talk about, you know, what kind of dictates the use of different accessories, say a different type of screw, you know, in an assembly. So engineering wise, pretty much anything when it comes to testing, you can do more, you can't do less, right? Let's say, you know, we tested this system with a number 12 by one inch faster go into a metal deck. There's a shortage and for some reason we can't get number 12s anymore. Well, you can go up to a number 14 because it's a heavier fastener and it has better pullout values than say if you went to a number 10. You know, those are those are the kind of situations you can look at when it comes to the engineering portion of it. When it comes to accessories as far as underlayments or sealants or things like that, you always have to get it approved through the technical department first before you use it. So Step one, submit it for approval. You don't want to start using something that's not approved because it might come back and bite you. But things you should be thinking about before you send a product in for a review is, uh, you know, one of the big things is just, you know, keep in mind the long-term aspect of it. You know, we look at underlayments all the time and they have five, 10-year warranties and, you know, on their product. And, you know, the warranty that you're applying for is a 30-year weather type warranty. We're not going to approve a 10-year warranty product under something that we got to carry for 30 years. 
You know, the, all the accessories should be looked at as matching the expected lifespan of the roof, right? You don't you don't want a sixty year you don't want a sixty year roof with twenty year parts. You know, you want something that's going to last as long as the roof is. So you mentioned that the technical department uh, and the weather tight warranty uh, inspectors will provide that information on you know what accessories to get for that particular project. But is there information available as well for someone to review? Yeah. So on the submittal package in the quote form, it does talk about the accessories. It talks about things that aren't approved. It talks about the underlayments we do approve. You know, we approve one underlayment right now. That is our standard underlayment, which is the shark skin product. It doesn't make sense for a company like ours to carry 15 different products. If there is a problem with a spec, can another underlayment be approved? It can. You know, it's going to be one that we feel, you know, can meet our standards and requirements. And we have usually have conversations with contractors about that. But in the quote form in the application, it, uh, you know, it talks about the sealant that's going to be required. It talks about um, the underlayments that are going to be required and basically walks you through the whole process of, uh, of the warranty program from start to finish, from the moment you apply to the moment we receive the paperwork and then all the back and forth in between until the project's closed out. We look a lot at the different different things that go into the accessories that we use, the different coating types on fasteners, the different properties of sealants. Some sealants stick better to metal than others. You know, we've all seen sealant, you know, that's not made for metal used on it. You can go, you can pull it up with your finger, you pull, pull a bead of sealant right off like it's nobody's business. We really aren't requiring anything that you should not not already know about, right? If you do metal roofing, you should be pretty comfortable with anything that uh, we're looking at having you use because... The reason we use it is because it's tried and tested. You know, we know it works. I'd say probably the uh, the the biggest thing that we require is uh, on square penetrations. We, re- we require pre-manufactured curves, flashing curves that go around the square penetrations. We've got a deal set up with a company that we work with. We're able to get them made out of a little lighter gauge aluminum than 080. We get our curves made out of 050 aluminum. They make them to our requirements. So, you know, that takes a lot of the headache from the contractor, you know, having to have a custom curb made. Again, just trying to keep keep them in mind and make it as easy as possible for people to be able to use us. And I will say that one of the most important things about the whole weather tight warranty process is how important it is to pay attention to the little details throughout the process. Like you said, you make it really easy uh, for the contractor, but it's also pretty easy to look at two different clips that look super similar, but one is the correct one and one is the non-approved one. So tell me about that a little bit. You know, a perfect example is uh, the inch and three quarter panel, right? Every Everybody makes an inch and three quarter clip, but there's only one UL stamped inch and three quarter clip. And if that is a requirement that you have to have a UL stamped engineering clip, that can become a problem you know, halfway through your project, if you realize that, you know, you put the wrong clip on. Even little things, you know, like uh, the two-inch panel. The two-inch can do a regular two-inch panel or it can do what they call the Armco panel, which has that additional down leg. Well, there's engineering on the standard two-inch that greatly exceeds the engineering on the Armco panel. The biggest thing we see that sets apart successful weather type warranties of ones that, you know, could have gone smoother is the communication, Right. Communication between the contractor and the technical department, you know, having those open lines. Yeah. And all this information is readily available too, both on SheffieldMetals.com and on the tech stick, whether it be testing reports or even clip drawings. On the tech stick, particularly, we have the, the clip diagrams, and those are the, only the engineered clips. It's not every clip that we sell, it's just the clips that we have tested. We have them separated between for steel panel systems and for aluminum panel systems. You can't, you can't really go wrong. When you start a warranty with Sheffield, you go through this middle process and the application, and then you'll get assigned an inspector that's basically going to be with you from start to finish. You know, So you're going to have one point of contact that you can deal with the whole time, and they should be your go-to for any questions that uh, come up warranty-wise. Is there anything else we missed when it comes to accessories for weather-type warranties? You know, the only other thing I'll say is... Um, if you have any questions about the parts or pieces used in you know, our warranties and things like that, we have our recommended installation detail manuals. They have descriptions of how things go together. Everything's color-coded, all the different parts and pieces. And you can see exactly you know, what's going to be used in the, uh, the assemblies that you know, people are putting together. The other thing I'll say is even if it's not a weather-type warranty, it's always good to think about long-term metal roofing 
using the best products you can to give your metal roof the longevity that you know it could potentially have. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Jeff. I really appreciate learning about accessories for weather tight warranties from you. Thanks again. If you have any questions, please comment down below. We'd love to answer them. Subscribe here to the Metal Roofing channel. As always, I'm Fab Barnett, and we'll catch you next time.